بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله today is 13th of February 2020 it's a Thursday I will recite inshallah from Surah At-Tawbah from ayah number 94 أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يعتذرون إليكم إذا رجعتم إليهم قل لا تعتذروا لن نؤمن لكم <coughs> قل لا تعتذروا لن نؤمن لكم قد نبأنا الله من أخباركم وسيرى الله عملكم ورسوله ثم تردون إلى عالم الغيب والشهادة فينبئكم بما كنتم تعملون سيحلفون بالله لكم إذا قلبتم إليهم لتعرضوا عنهم فأعرضوا عنهم فأعرضوا عنهم إنهم رجس ومأواهم جهنم جزاء بما كانوا يكسبون يحلفون لكم لترضوا عنهم فإن ترضوا عنهم فإن الله لا يرضى عن القوم الفاسقين This verse talks about the munafiqin, the hypocrites and the hypocrites gets most exposed when they cannot continue doing drama and hypocrisy and that appears the most when it comes to the matters of playing with, with your own life sacrificing your own life so these are valuable things that that exposes the munafiqeen may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this this symptoms and diseases that starts from the heart and then its manifestation appears here and there but what the heart conceals is very much terrible those hypocrisy and we must know that the hypocrisy are not just one one category there are hypocrisy that are closer to total disbelief in Islam and there are hypocrisy that are closer to the camp of the believers and in between there are hypocrisy which is touching the ideology atiqadi and there are hypocrisy that appears in certain amal in certain actions and deeds so we should not generalize this and Quran also maintains this kinds of specification and and classifications and various grades and levels anyway this verse he came on the context of Ghazwa Tabuk so it was a unique uh, expedition and battle of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, that came at the time when the heart is most inclined to the earth that is the agrarian society of Medina who, who mostly uh, work in the fields it was the harvesting time so you have an attachment with the earth number two it was at a very very hot summer number three all the previous battles of the Prophet ﷺ was against the Arabs other tribes of Arabs mostly Quraysh right but this is now an international battle with a superpower at that time which is the Roman Empire so all these situations together made the munafiqeen exposed they became really in a in a in a terrible situation now how can they cover it how can they present excuses to show the the prophet and the believers that we had this excuse that excuse I have uh, so they will present so many excuses and many of them they just stayed without joining this expedition which it was obligatory if the prophet called for jihad everybody needs to participate so lots of them they gave very lame excuses and stayed and we should know that's why you are saying that there are so many grades that even some of those three of 
the Sahaba who are believers. They are not munafiqeen. They loved Allah and Rasul. But various procrastination and things like this and that made them stay behind. And that's the whole name of this surah, Tawbah, which will be in a topic for a different discussion, inshallah. So, so those pure munafiqeen, when the Prophet came back from the battle, and, uh, and this battle, there was no encounter in terms of the two army clashing. It was, it was just uh, a psychological battle and its objective, one of the objective was to expose this munafiqeen. So the believers who, despite all this difficult parameters of summer and facing the superpower they willingly went and participated and came back with zero casualty and the munafiqeen stayed behind because they thought that we might get destroyed but allah willed and this battle had no no military encounter and so they, they were losers right they were losers and that's the mukari of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah says, Allah yastahzi'u bihim. Allah, they play tricks and Allah also play tricks with them. So now they are exposed. So when the, the Prophet returned after this expedition to Medina, they rushed to the Prophet with so many excuses. Uh, we could not participate because this and this. So Allah is telling them. Allah is telling how to telling us how to reply to them. La ta'atadiru. Don't give excuse. We'll never believe you. Lan lakum. Because Allah has told us your news. Qadnabba'an Allahu min akhbarikum. And Allah never in Quran tell us any particular names. We don't hear any particular names of X, Y, Z among the hypocrites. But what we know is the detail of their, uh, their behavior, which matters more. I mean, Quran is meant to be for all time, all locations. So those names will have no benefit for us. What is benefit is to highlight the characters and inner feelings and the slip of tongues that they say. So these are the things that, that is most helpful for two purposes. To first rectify oneself if a believing person finds after reading this ayah that he has certain traits, let's make tawbah, let's return, let's do all kind of possible uh, measures to get rid of those bad traits if we have and return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the self-evaluation, self-correction and of course the other purpose is to be vigilant and look around you and do you see this kind of traits among those who claim to be uh, loving Allah and Rasul? If you see them then be aware. They might be spies, they might be working uh, in favor of the non-believers. Don't believe them. And this is the measures of this world. But what awaits? You're going to return to the, to the hereafter where there will be the drama will continue there, there the drama and mockery of allah against the hypocrites and non-believers is not in this world as much as it is on the hereafter and we read from surah al-tahrim as well as in surah al-hadid very interesting ayat especially especially in surah hadid when the believers will be giving light that will lead the path and illuminate the path that leads to Jannat and the Munafiqeen will be among the crowd and they will see that oh the believers are getting light so let's join the team it's a free ride to Jannah but what will happen <coughs> they will 
say to the believers, Andiruna naqtabis min nurikum. Oh believers, don't run fast. Just wait for us. We, we, we want to be with you in the, in, the, in the light. So the believers will say, Qil arji'u wara'akum. It will be said to them, go back. Just stay back. There is a light coming for you. So they will be filled with hope and joy. Okay, we'll have our light as well. But the moment they will return, the believers will proceed fast and a, and, a, and a shield and a barrier and a wall will be, all in a sudden will be in between them. And they will not be able to proceed. So this is a mockery. This is, this is a mockery that will happen to them on the Day of Judgment. And we read in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah a very, very graphic picture of a, um, of a night, cloudy night with rain and thunderstorm and lightning and the uh, munafiqeen they are afraid of this rain, they are wet and this in the, inside the shower and whenever the thunder roars as if it's taking their snatching out their souls so they put their fingers in their ears they are afraid of death hadar al maut whenever there is a lightning coming they see the see the light and then they start walking and immediately the lightning goes then they return to pitch darkness and they stop after a few seconds another lightning they move one or two step immediately. So you see this, this graphic picture and that shows this the Quran, the, the message of Islam. If you don't love it, it becomes a burden on you. The Quran has the element of receiving it with heart and mind and love and sincerity. Then the Quran will be a treasure for you. It will give peace and tranquility uh, tranquility to you and it will be the greatest asset that will lead you to build civilization on this earth and salvation on the hereafter now those who are actors hypocrites they don't have the Quran in their heart they just use the Quran as a camouflage to show that okay we are with you but their heart is with shaitan with non-believers, they hate Islam and for them the Quran is a burden, Quran is a thunder, Quran is a roaring sound, Quran exposes them, they feel very embarrassed because it's not the, like a media that you, official media you control and filter the message as, as you like it, no, the Quran comes and tells what is what is the reality? What is their inner feelings and the heart? That's why Allah says, Qad Allahu min barikum. Allah has told us. So this is the power of the Quran. It is a peace for the believers and a thunder, roaring sound for the non-believers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And the next verses, I don't have much time but the traditional tool of munafiqeen is the half swearing wallahi nashhadu innaka la rasulullah as we see in the beginning of surah al-munafiqeen we swear that you are allah's rasul does prophet muhammad need a swear he is a rasul and he is a rasul even the earth was created before the Adam was created. So what's the value of this adding? So they wanted to <coughs> compensate their ill feelings by exposing otherwise so that they wanted to prove that, yeah, I'm here. It's like uh, somebody, uh, you see, that uh, uh, makes more noises just to prove himself. But in the essence, they are not there, okay? So the munafiqin use always this half. Say, "Ahlifuna billahi lakum lituaridu anhum." 
May Allah protect us from all kind of symptoms and traits of munafiqeen. And when we talk about munafiqeen, we should not keep ourselves in a high tower and, and look into them from a distance. No, we could be that person. Umar bin Khattab used to annoy always Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman who has some knowledge, specific, specific, specified knowledge about munafiqeen, some secrets that the Prophet told. So Umar bin Khattab very often used to annoy Hudayfa. Did, did Prophet mention my name among the munafiqeen to you, O Hudayfa? Please tell me the secret. Until one day, Hudayfa was very annoyed because this guy is annoying him every day. So just to get rid of him, he said, no, he didn't mention you and, and I'm not going to tell this. So he actually exposed that, the, the secret of the Prophet Wasallam. So if this is Umar bin Khattab, how can me and you think ourselves above those traits? So, so let's, when we discuss the Munafiqeen, let's discuss it in a self-evaluation perspective as well as being being vigilant what's going around us assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu